All right, we only have four races to go before the end of the 2024 NASCAR Cup Series season. And Kansas is the destination for round number three in the 24 playoffs. Four more drivers have been eliminated, including one driver who had no idea he was eliminated until, I guess, a few hours after the race on Sunday. How's it going, CJ? Uh, it is going well. Um, four to go, like you said. Here we go. Joey Logano squeaks through. It's an even year. Let's see if he can get it done. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you know, at least his odds are good enough where and we've already suggested everybody to take Joey Logano to win the championship like two months ago when we had him at, what, 18 or 22 to 1 or something. So we're in the bank there. But even now for races, he's like still around 12 to 1. He's never going to get lower than that, really, uh, at least during the week. So why not just uh, include him in every one of your bets for the next three races, just in case? So The bad luck he was having at the beginning of the season sure seems to have caught up with him and turned around this past week. So um, maybe that's the momentum that you need. There are a couple other guys that are picking up very strong uh, wins in their sales, though, as we come to these last four races. It's going to be interesting. All right. So uh, anyway, look, as far as the road course was concerned at the Roval, I remember uh, the first several races there. Uh, of course, I remember Blaney winning. But then I remember the just unbelievable finish, one of the greatest finishes you'll ever going to see in an elimination round race. Uh, that that was the that, that was Jimmy Johnson, right? The, he was the one that that eliminated himself for being trying to go for the win. Correct. Yeah. Yep. And that was just a fantastic finish. Just how crazy it was. And who was it? Was it Larson who wound up limping over the finish line for the and, and he he got in. Or was I it another driver? Are, yeah, I do believe you are correct. So that was, <laughs> a, that, but as crazy as that was, and as fun as that was, the problem with the Roval lately is it's been pretty boring. I'm not really getting anything out of this Roval right now. I don't know about you. Yeah, they even tried to switch it up. So they reconfigured the track. They introduced that really hard breaking area before that hairpin turn before they go back onto the oval again and there was some action there but that was really the only place that you could pass i didn't see really any other kind of passes going on uh in the chicane leading up to the start finish line and if passes did happen there uh, it ended up being a penalty or some kind of contact because either the outside car would end up in the wall when they exited or the inside car uh, would get a penalty from uh you know cutting cutting the track so they ended up having to stop and you know it, do a stop and go before they got going again. So yeah, it was dominated again by uh, Kyle Larson, similar to not as dominant, but similar to the domination that we saw in Bristol. Um, I'm, I don't know, I'm more of a fan of the natural terrain road courses. I think we get better racing there. It's a little bit artificial within the road course. And I think um, Charlotte's just, you know, it's a small track, so you can't spread it out very much. It's 1.5 miles versus the road course at Daytona, which is 2.5 miles. So you get an extra mile just on the oval portion there. So you can build up a little bit more speed. And I think that just causes the problem at Charlotte. Yeah. And on top of it, it's a playoff race. Mm -hmm. So yep. correct. is this in the playoffs again next year? I believe it is. If I'm not mistaken, I'd have to recheck the schedule again. Um, but yeah, I, not not a whole heck of a lot of changes to the schedule next year. I think Charlotte remains in there. I think Watkins Glen moves back out. I, so I think Watkins Glen is the one that kind of moves back a little bit. Um, this year was a little messed up because of the Olympics and the time that they took up um, or took out uh, to to allow the Olymp Olympics to go on. But I think uh, Charlotte remains. All right. Anyway, the big story was Alex Bowman and just what a major downer. Uh, I don't think anybody was happy to see that. Uh, Bowman, uh, who was uh, our top long shot play entering the playoffs and everything was looking great. And then the news, I mean, wow, uh, that's just uh, really tough. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know who's to blame. I guess we'll find out maybe in the coming days, coming weeks. I don't know if we ever will, but, uh, you know, I, I know you try to always you got to get to that line. You can't cross it, but I don't know. I, I mean, I think there's, 
uh, somebody's somebody's got some explaining to do because, and I know it's not easy to to stay out of trouble on a road course, but really that's all Alex Bowman had to do, to stay out of trouble. He had to win the race. Uh, I don't understand what I don't understand what they were doing. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. To finish of 18th before the disqualification had a cushion, I think, of like nine points uh, within the playoffs. So he was easily through. Um, for a very average day. Um, and he's good at that track too. Um, didn't make any problems for himself, did everything that he needed to do. But then the team came up short with a basic thing. I mean, one of the most basic rules is you've got to meet the minimum weight and you're even allowed a 17 pound cushion uh, either way from my understanding. So, um, you know, if you read Jeff Gordon's comments or heard them, after it was kind of like uh, Kevin Stefanski, coach of the Browns, every single Monday. Yeah, it's a coaching thing. We need to coach better. We need to play better. We're just not winning. It's not winning football. This is not winning NASCAR. This is not winning racing. Uh, that's a massive mistake, especially in a cutoff race, let alone a playoff race, especially when your driver did everything on track necessary to advance. So that's a lot of money out of Hendrick's pocket. Everybody's going to be upset i'm sure and, and angry but yeah you're right somebody's gonna have to pay the price for it somebody's got to take the blame ultimately crew chief car chief one of those two i would say is has got to be the the ones that that feel it and and it's not like it's like a part that you can nope. even understand mm -hmm. it's weight how do you not weigh the car and then know whether or not it's overweight the only thing i can think of is that they had bad scales themselves <laughs> so <laughs> so did they recalibrate their their scales incorrectly yeah uh, did they them up wrong um and was that a problem that affected them throughout the weekend um that's about the only thing i can think of because it's very clear and and like i said it's table stakes for for racing if you don't meet minimum weight you it doesn't count period and, and there are very few disqualifications for weight and and yes they cut it very very close and it is a game of fine margins and there have been disqualifications for things like this in the past uh, but this one seems pretty egregious and and the screwed up thing too is is not just because hendra could have had all four drivers in but out of the four drivers it had to be the guy that's the four that's the fourth of the four and who's actually been doing a great job in the playoffs. It's just it really turned things around. Yeah. Absolutely. Mind boggling. Yep. All it's right. a, definitely a blow for Alex Bowman. We'll see how he's able to recover. Um, yeah. I, I, and then with the team refusing to appeal, obviously that shows that the admission that they screwed up. Yeah. So uh, again, that's, that's not on, on Bowman's shoulders. 100% a team sport. We talked about that going into the weekend. This is exactly it. You can make mistakes on track or off track. This was a team mistake. We'll see how Alex Bowman is able to respond to these last four races, see if he's able to keep his momentum and prove that he should have gotten his way into Phoenix or see if he fades as a result of the, <clears throat> as a result of the stumble, stumble. Yeah, it's just really bad. Uh, all right. Let's talk about Las Vegas. And one, this is a 1.5 mile trioval, and and we got a very similar easy comparison track, and that's Kansas. So if you want to do any sort of comparisons, all you got to do is take a look at Kansas. But again, just keep in mind, all it is, it's a comparison. What happens in Kansas? It's a good tool to use. It's not the be all end all. Um, and I say that because um, I think it was was it Chris Busher had a good year this year at Kansas. And he's awful at Las <clears throat> Vegas. So, <laughs> you know, sometimes that happens. But that's why, you know, it's Larson did win, though, uh, the first race in March, I believe it was May. And yet, and also he's won back to back. So, again, some of it makes sense. Some of it doesn't. Just keep that in mind, though. All right. So, taking a look. Now, there have only been 33 races at Vegas so far. But Chevy uh, has really been dominant there lately. They've won six out of eight. Hendrick winning four of the last seven, including, of course, Larson's uh, last two. Matter of fact, Byron, uh, it's been three straight, I believe. Byron winning before that. And as far as starting position, uh, 
Seven of the last nine winners have uh, started in the top three rows with three straight drivers, Larson, Larson, Byron, starting in second place. Um, Larson winning in May, led 63 laps, so it wasn't like a dominating effort. And uh, Russ Chastain came from nowhere uh, to win uh, just recently in Kansas. Uh, and again, these are Kansas. Um leading 52 laps so one of the things though that is not a, no trends nothing like that just entertainment value that las vegas the, this track has become maybe the best 1.5 mile track and the race earlier this year was was very exciting it was a very good race yeah it's definitely been jumping up the order in terms of excitement we used to be a couple seasons ago talking about how boring some of these cookie cutter 1.5 mile ovals have been and i think the combination again <clears throat> slight reprofiling of these tracks um the new car really plays to these strengths so i think you get much more passing i will still say these cars are still aerodynamically dependent so if you get caught in dirty air it's much more difficult to make passes but i still think it's way better than we had in the past. So the ground effects are doing their jobs. I think the tracks are doing their jobs and we're getting better racing. But yeah, Las Vegas has traditionally, and Kansas has actually, both of these tracks have become highlights of the season. I mean, especially when, which is strange, especially when you've got some place like Bristol that's kind of fallen off the map, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, it's just the thing. It's a little give and take with the next gen car is that it's fixed the 1.5 mile boredom and unfortunately, it's uh, not been good for the short tracks, including Bristol. So, okay. Let's take a look at, before we get into the race odds, let us get into the futures. Start to stay, you have to start coming down here sooner or later because Larson was 4-1. to one. I got to believe he's probably now at 3-1, to one, you think? 350? Yeah, I would say 2.5 to 3 at this point with a win coming up to Las Vegas where he's won two in a row and finished second in the True. race before that. Uh, I think he's got to be pretty low at this point. Oh, you were right. 350. There he is. And then who do you think is next? Um, hmm. Uh, in my mind, it's Byron. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Reddick is up there again. All right. Yeah, I'm going to say Byron at four to one. You're going to say Reddick? Or Byron? I'll go, I'll go with Reddick, yeah, because okay. he surprised me last week with where where the, where the Vegas had him. Bell. Bell. <laughs> okay. Reddick. <laughs> There's Reddick and then Byron. Wow. Look at, no Byron oh, until 650. You got to go Byron. Uh, if you are if you sat out up until this point, best person on the board right now is Byron. Absolutely. No, no question. Blaney also at 650. Wow, look at that jump to Elliott. Yeah, I can understand that probably should be lower. And then there's the gun at 12. You know, that's the one thing, though, that if you look at it, I mean, Reddick, you know, he's, yeah, he's, Reddick is kind of newish, but I mean, look at all these drivers. I mean, this is some quality group of drivers. It's it, the way it should be. It, absolutely. Even though I know that uh, we had a uh, an, an upset, a, uh, one of our viewers was a little upset. Uh, I don't disagree with them. <laughs> <laughs> what was the, let me see, let me take uh, some of those comments. It was uh, Charles Wainwright, 2042. This was once a great sport before it became a wannabe ball game who even, uh, a wannabe ball game. Who even watches this crap anymore? Can't remember the last <laughs> time I saw anybody wear a NASCAR cap. Wow. And CJ, by the way, you had a nice response. I, I assume he was referencing this knockout format. And I've said it from the beginning. I am more of a traditionalist. I like the season-long points battle. I don't like the artificial drama. Yes, it makes it exciting. It makes some of the races um toward the end of the season worth a little bit more it was put in place when jimmy johnson and chad knaus were dominating so i get why they did it 
Um, but I, I am still more of a traditionalist for sure. And then we had some nice, uh, kind, missed you responses. Wayne, Wayne's up there with one of our biggest viewers. I'm so glad you're safe. I was lost without your show. Wayne, you make, you're putting pressure on me, Wayne. <laughs> I can't quit. I'm not saying I don't want to quit, but uh, I'm still in first place and don't know how. But keep, keep, uh, but keep, keep there, my friends. I'm not sure he must have missed, missed something there. Uh, S. Cole, uh, happy to hear you are safe, all things considered. Missed the show and your guys' insight. Uh, Lana, glad you are okay. Missed you guys. So uh, yes, we we really appreciate everybody's uh, kind words. Um, and then the, oh, KLRD J O seven. Um, this one I didn't get the discreet because I wasn't obviously I was out of commission. The discreet pit maneuver on Blaney wasn't anywhere near as cringe as the long face and sor and the sorrowful act that Bowman put on during that interview after the race. Now this was last week, the week before. This wasn't the road course race. So do you know what he uh, do you know what he meant by that? Uh, I'm not remembering. Would that have been at Talladega? Then I think that was the race before. Or was it a, a different track? Yeah, you um, see, we were out of commission. We're out of commission. It's uh, <clears throat> tough, but maybe you can, uh, yeah. I don't know, send me a link, yep. uh, uh, KLRD, and I'll check it out. Or if anybody yep. else knows. But apparently, bad, bad karma then on Bowman. Yeah, there you go. So don't. Don't uh, don't put a sorrowful long face act on next time, Bowman. Uh, it'll come back to bite you. Okay, so yeah, uh, I'm not feeling it with Elliot, even though it's eleven no. to one. He's I been agree. I, I think agree? it should be lower or higher, however, whatever you want to say. I, I think it should, you should you should be getting a bigger return for Elliot right now, especially considering how long it's been since he's won. Yeah, Logano though, again, maybe he's the Juju's back. So, but we've been touting, like we said, Logano for a couple of months. So hopefully you got him when, when we told you to. But yeah, right here, uh, it's looking to me like without question, if I was just putting money on on it today, uh, the best bargains, what I would do is I would do Byron and Blaney at 650 and Logano. I like Byron, I like Blaney, and I like Logano. Absolutely, absolutely right. Bell's, I can see why he's up there. He's been there all season, relatively quiet right now. But I think uh, it's, this is this format's all about how you, how and when you get hot. And I think that is there for Byron. We're seeing it right now. It is not there for Hamlin. Uh, Elliot's quiet, like you said, and perhaps this lucky break with the penalty to Bowman is what Logano needed to get his hot streak going. All right. Now, no surprise who the favorite's going to be. Larson. Yeah. And he is an overwhelming favorite. He's a Shane Van Gisbergen favorite. And you know how that turned out for Shane the last two times. He was a heavy favorite. Look, I don't know how many times we got to say this because it's like 90% of the time we warn you about going with any driver that's double as a, as a favorite. And the reason is because 90% of the time – uh, we're going to be right. You just, it's just, it's just not worth it. But again, you have to be religious with it. You can't pick and choose. You just got to stay that course because if you stay the course and you stay away all the time, it'll, it'll be to, to the benefit of you. Of course, Larson can win on Sunday and maybe he will, but I'm willing to take that two or three times a year that a short price driver goes out and wins because over the long haul, I'm, I'm gonna, it's going to be better off financially for me. And, 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 and so we'll get into it. But all right, so Byron, you know, he's in a good spot. Uh, Bell and uh, Hamlin. Let's... Why, uh, why Hamlin be there? Well, yeah, Hamlin, the one thing with Hamlin is, is that he has finished 11th or better in seven of his last eight at Vegas with four top fives in a win. He was fifth at Kansas and eighth at Kansas. And he's led at least five laps or more in all eight of those races I mentioned. But he only has one win out of 25. Uh, hasn't led a ton of laps at Vegas, all things considered. And he's not exactly uh, on. So he's now sixth in the standings. And um, yeah, what is he? He's about... 
35 points or something like that behind Larson, which is not really what you need to be worried about. All you need to be worried about is who are you behind the fourth place driver. And yeah. and that's why when you take a look and you got Byron is four points ahead of Blaney, eight points ahead of Hamlin, nine points ahead of Elliott, and 11 points ahead of Logano. So Byron to Logano, it's just an open race right now. Uh, and that's really what you're looking at. But anyway, yeah, Hamlin has only won top five since his runner-up at Richmond. Yeah, I'm not sure why you'd go with Hamlin. The His momentum seems to be going the opposite direction. He's quiet right now. Eight points behind uh, the fourth-place position there. I think we ought to be talking about Tyler Reddick in this spot. Christopher Bell, maybe uh, maybe I get a little bit. Um you know, he finished 33rd there earlier this year, uh, but was the runner-up in the pole sitter um, the fall race of last year. So I can see why he's there. William Byron makes all the sense in the world because of how hot he's been. And we've been talking about him first, seventh, and tenth in his last three Las Vegas races. Uh, we know why Larson's the favorite, second, first, and first, and started on the first front row, I should say, uh, the last two races. Um, but then Hamlin, like, I, I don't know, 12th, 31st, 12th, 15th, and 28th in his last four Las Vegas races. I think I'd probably go with Tyler Reddick, who I'm guessing would be next in line there in the odds uh, over over Hamlin. This yeah. Weekend. Um, the thing is that both Reddick and, and Hamlin have chilled. And True. Um, I wouldn't take either one. I mean, it's just me. I mean, because you look at it, they both are very similar at this track because Hamlin, as I mentioned, hit, he's been pretty steady lately, and Reddick has also been steady here with five top tens in his last six, runner-up in March. Uh, keep in mind, Reddick, two bad results at Kansas. Uh, again, I, I, I care more about the fact that he was runner-up in March than what he was at Kansas. Um so, and as far as Hamlin, uh, yeah, I mean, I just, for me, I, I just, I'm passing on both of them to tell you the truth. But yeah, I mean, if you pick Reddick over Hamlin, either way, I mean, I can understand that uh, considering he was runner up in March uh, and he's getting nine to one, even though it's uh, pretty much the same as Hamlin at this point. Uh, but I agree with what you're saying with Byron for sure. I mean, the guy's red hot. Uh, he won the race, uh, the first race last year. Uh, he's finished 10th, 7th, and 1st in his last three at Las Vegas. So he was also second at Kansas in September. So keep that in mind. Uh, yeah, I, I really love Byron this week for sure. And look, Larson, it's, it's, it's not, he's won the last two, so he's defending champ. He's finished 1st or 2nd in five of his last seven races at Las Vegas while leading 602 of the 628 all-time laps he's ever led there in his career. And again, he won at Kansas in May. Uh, matter of fact, he's led 314 laps combined over his last two wins at Vegas. But... As I said from the out, outset, just not going to take anybody at three to one when you can get when you can take two drivers for the price of one, uh, which is what you could have done last week. You could have taken Larson and someone, and you would have been right there. You would have won your race. That's what we're going to do this week, uh, taking Byron and a driver. And by the way, as far as Bell, he was second, as you mentioned, uh, uh, CJ, uh, in this race last year. Um, but he's only led 93 laps in nine races. He was solid at Kansas, though. A couple top tens. I believe he led the most laps in the in, in the race, uh, the playoff race. I believe so. Um, but you know, not 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 a big bargain. But what I do like with Bell, uh, that that I'm, which is why I would definitely take Bell over Reddick and Hamlin, is that. Like Byron, Bell is just really going on a nice roll. Even though he hasn't won in a while, he's got a lot of top fives, a lot of top tens over the last uh, several months. And 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 he's a solid eight to one. Yeah, I think Bell has been the most consistent driver. I think Byron's the hottest. I think a couple other things going against Larson this week are we haven't had a driver sweep wins at a track this season yet. There you we go. also any driver win back to back. There you go. We so there are a number of strikes against Larson. If you're going to, you know, take half the price for for that, you should probably be expecting a little bit more return on that. And the reason I talk about Reddick, I, I don't disagree with you. I think he has cooled off a little bit. As I said, Bell's been much more consistent. The thing that impressed me about Reddick in particular at this track is the race earlier this year in March when he started 18th. 
and ended up coming to finish second. And yeah, he only led one lap. He's got to get out there and lead more laps at this track. For sure, he only only has, uh, what, 48 total yeah. laps led, nine starts. Uh, if he starts leading laps, though, I think the wins are going to come at this track for him. All right. Now, uh, let's uh, go over the next wave. We got Logano, Blaney, Elliott, Truex, and Kyle. And out of this group here, uh, yeah, definitely again, Logano and Blaney. Just like we said with the playoffs, still like them here in this group. And Truex and Kyle, I think, are also interesting. Uh, but Logano, he's got three wins. They've all come since 2019. Matter of fact, he has three top fives in his last 11 races at Las Vegas, and they're all wins. Uh, he's led only, not that he dominated in any of the races, leading 32, 54, and 86 laps. Didn't have a good run at Kansas this year, so keep that in mind. Um, but Logano is, uh, you know, it's a good number at 10 to one Blaney at 11 to one. What I like about Blaney is even though he's never won, he hasn't led a lot of laps. Uh, but he, he's one of those drivers and you don't see this a whole lot often in, in, in NASCAR. You see it in golf, but you don't see it a lot in NASCAR where over the last five races here, he's been better the, the last e- you know, each time. Matter of fact, he's gone from 36th to third over his last five races with each race having a better result. So if that continues, then he'll finish second or first on Sunday. That's good news. He also has six top fives at a 16. So he's had some decent results here and he's coming off a fourth of Kansas. And we know Ryan Blaney being a championship pedigree driver. Now, uh, he, I, I kind of think he's overdue for, for a really good performance. I don't know if it's this week, but I think he's overdue for one. And as far as Truex and uh, Kyle, I think they're, I, I think it's interesting that, you know, I, I think they're worth one of them taking one of them. I, and maybe it's Kyle because we've talked about Truex and it's just been a miserable run for Truex. The only thing about Truex, though, is this is just one of his best tracks. He's finished 11th or, uh, or better in 15 of his last 16 races at Las Vegas. So you might want to fantasy Truex here. Uh, that includes a runner-up and two wins. But... And also fourth and third at Kansas. Okay, so he's got that as well. But in saying that, he's only led 25 combined laps in his last nine. And we know how uh, how things are going. And now he's officially eliminated from the playoffs, which is why Kyle's probably the way to go out of those two. Uh, even though Kyle's only got one win, but he has 12 top fives out of 26. So that's that close to 50%. Uh, one top 10 in Kansas. And you just do wonder, you know, is Kyle going... Uh, to get himself a win. Uh, and if he does, this would be a good track to do it. So I'm thinking about Logano, Blaney, and Kyle here. I think of the bunch, Blaney and Logano, without a doubt, are the top two choices. And I would put Blaney probably over Logano because I think, uh, again, that improvement each time over five races, plus I agree with you, I think he's overdue. He's been driving too well. Uh, for too long to not have a win very recently. Joey Logano, very good at this track, um, very good on the short runs. Um, if you look at qualifying, he started on pole two of the last three times here. He started inside the top 10, the last six. He started inside the top five, three of the last four. Uh, so Logano, if, uh, if it comes down to a short run, they've definitely figured it out. But that also plays to Blaney as well, since they're teammates. Obviously, they can share notes. Um, they Elliot, eh, I don't know. Um, maybe, maybe from a fantasy perspective, I would expect him to do a top ten uh, this weekend, with because it's the playoffs and because Chevy. he's really consistent and he's a Chevy. Um, but nothing really great at this track very recently. The um, the Bush Truex conversation. I might definitely take Truex from a fantasy perspective because he hasn't finished outside the top ten here. Uh, since 2020 and that was the only time he's finished outside the top 10 going all the way back to 2016 at this track Uh, we have talked a ton this year about how horrible his luck is but that would suggest to me that he's in line for a top 10 this week maybe not the win maybe maybe, so maybe you're right maybe i do agree maybe i'm talking myself into going with bush there because i think bush probably has more potential to win from a betting standpoint um, he's just got to get over his bad luck that he's had. He's definitely had the speed in recent weeks, but Truex, I think Truex is a definite fantasy play. 
Uh, but his his luck so far in 2024 has just been so bad. I could see him leading the entire race and then it coming down to a restart and having somebody <laughs> beat it. That's just the way it's been for him in 2024. Well, you know, what might also happen is that, and one of the other advantages Kyle has is that he's driving a Chevy. But yeah. this could be that Truex wins because it shows you again how bad luck he's had that he'll win once he's eliminated from the playoffs. That is that is a fair point as well. Yeah, Abs- that would be horrible luck. <laughs> yeah, uh, Chastain, Gibbs, and the rest. There are not a lot of good long shots this week. Uh, and Chastain uh, coming off the win at Kansas. I can't expect he's going to do anything here, even though he has four top fives in his last five races at Las Vegas. Keep that in mind. But he's only led two laps in his last three uh, at the track. Uh, but out of this group here. I'd probably, you know, I, I, pro- I guess out of this group, I'd go with Bowman um, because of, I don't know, karma in a good way. Um, he, he's getting 28 to one. Okay. So we're not talking about a 15 to one driver. He's 28 to one. He's got a win here just a couple of years ago. So, you know, maybe there's some justice, uh, but yeah, out of that group, I'd probably go Bowman and really at the rest of them, there's just nothing. Nothing. Nothing sticks out to me. Maybe Gregson, uh, fantasy-wise, but I don't see anything. Yeah, Gregson finished sixth uh, earlier this year after starting 30th, so that is pretty good from a um, fantasy perspective. Somebody who's been pretty consistent and consistently improving further on down the road has been uh, Carson Hosevar as well. Yeah. So 15th uh, this year, uh, or earlier this year, started 14th, so he kind of hung out there in the top 15 pretty much the entire day. Um I agree with you. I think of that group that you've got on the screen right now, Bowman's the one to go. Some people might think Wallace because of his success at Kansas, but he's not really done anything here at Las Vegas. Uh, Ty Gibbs, I'm still, and last week was proof of it. He's got problems. He's got to figure out how to win. He's got the equipment that should be winning, but he hasn't yet. And Chastain, uh, agree with you. I, I think he's... You know, good from a fantasy perspective, um, I don't think he's going to come out and win. I think he has probably got his peak for the season behind him at this point. Yeah, and uh, maybe I, I would I would consider or think about Busher just because of the fact that, as I said, he was really good at Kansas. And I don't know, maybe if you – I would say this. If you notice something Saturday, and we'll talk about that. We'll have our starting lineup report on Saturday – so if you notice, uh, and if, if, if there's anything to notice, I'll let you know. I'll remind you about Busher, but that's the only way because he's got such a big number at 35 that even if he does something that makes it look like, oh, maybe there's something there, you're still going to get a good number. But all right, uh, picks. Before, before you go on, before you go on with Busher, I do think it makes sense because um, if you look at what he's been able to do here recently, he never had qualified inside the top 15. Well, I guess once inside the top 15 at this track, but he started fifth and ninth in the last two races, finished 11th there last fall. And we have no idea what he would have been capable of after starting ninth there earlier this year because he crashed out. He did lead two laps before that, though. So it might be worth um, keeping Busher in mind, um, maybe even early to see, uh, to be able to grab that high number before it falls. Because if it does, if he does qualify in the top 10, you're going to lose some ground there for sure. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of long shots to choose from. So uh, why not put Busher in the mix along with Bowman? Uh, I'm, I'm all for that. Okay. Picks. Uh, I think mine are pretty obvious. Yeah. <laughs> Byron, Blaney. And then I guess I'll go for I'll go a little bit wild on the long shot. I'll go for Busher on the long shot. Okay. Yeah. So again, I definitely think this is the way to go. Double up uh, against Larson. So if you take Byron, who I agree, uh, he'll be my top pick as well. But I'll go ahead and I'll go. You know, I'll, I'll just go Bell. And let's see. Let's see if I'll go. You know, I'll go Logano. Bell, so I'm going to double up with Bell Logano. You're going to double up with Byron Blaney. Uh, so we're going to go uh, uh, head-to-head against Larson there. And then uh, the long shot, yeah, I'll go Bowman. Nice. All right. So anyway, there you go. 
Uh, what's coming up uh, next week? What's uh, what's on tap? On tap is Miami. Exciting track. That should be a good track for this car as well. Then we will finish out this round at Martinsville uh, before we head on to the finale at Phoenix. And they're going to change the schedule at Miami, so we're going to see it early again next year, right? Yes, it is coming out of the playoffs next year. It moves more toward the spring months, uh, if I'm remembering correctly. Yep. And don't forget, even though, one, I, 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 again, I don't understand why they can't give us the times on Saturday for qualifying and practice sessions uh, on a Tuesday morning. But uh, So I can't really tell you exactly when it's going to be, but I will be here. Uh, so uh, as far as the post-qualifying and practice videos, so check it out here on Prime Sports Network. If you're an F1 fan and you're uh, waiting to find out what we uh, have to say, especially CJ, on what's going on with the F1 as they make a return after their layoff, uh, then check out our F1 one video uh, that is com- that uh, we're going to be recording here uh, pretty much right now. So uh, check that out here uh, both at... Actually, we're going to also present the F1 video here on Prime Sports Network. Um, and uh, yeah, so how many more races to go, F1? Six to go, including this weekend. It oh, goes all right. the way to December. Longest F1 season in history. All right, so we'll have... <laughs> So when the home, so when 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 the ser- ser- season's over in NASCAR, we'll still have almost a month in F one. Yes. <laughs> okay. Remarkable. Yes. See, usually usually we were done, in, yep. uh, when NASCAR, NASCAR was always done. The yeah, NASCAR was always the longest season. F one blew them out of the water this year. <laughs> All right, that sounds like fun. Okay, so that's coming up uh, for you F one fans, and uh, we'll see you next week if you're if you're just a NASCAR guy. Uh, We'll see you as we preview the Homestead race next week, next Tuesday. Uh, Of course, we're doing it on Wednesday morning. Uh, Sometimes we have to do that, especially with the way things have gone lately. Uh, But don't forget, uh, check out the qualifying, post-qualifying and practice report on Saturday.